Welcome to the Cleveland Orchestra's On a Personal Note, where every story has a soundtrack. In difficult situations or moments of sheer joy, music connects us with our humanity. My name is Robert Wolfrey, and I am a clarinetist in the Cleveland Orchestra. Today, I would like to talk to you about Johannes Brahms' German Requiem. Brahms wrote the German Requiem, and unlike a traditional Requiem, which is written more for the departed or the dead, Brahms instead finds uplifting and meaningful, a meaningful text. And in some ways it's written for the living, the people that are mourning something or mourning a loss of something. I really feel in this piece, Brahms is making peace with his own mother's death. And he's, you know, it's the feelings of grief that I think one would go through when they, when they lose someone. And I think that, you know, you're flooded with emotions. It's not just one thing or another. It's, it's, it's many things. It's, it's not a black and white sort of thing. It, there's so many different shades of gray through this. And I think in the end, you know, there's much contemplation of what this means to Brahms himself and maybe what it means to the listener. There's darkness and it's like this piece takes you through all the stages of grief. In the end, I think there's hope in this piece and I think there's hope in all of this. My mom and my dad were just so supportive of me in the arts and me as a musician and trying new things. As a kid growing up, we played Rhapsody in Blue in high school and I was given the solo clarinet part. And for those of you that don't know that piece, it has this huge glissando and it's jazzy. And it was something that my mom and my dad always love. As a 19 year old, I was, I think, uh, very impressionable. And my mom tragically died. And it was a loss that just uh, irreplaceable. When my mom passed away, there was this feeling of, it's time to get serious and really kind of move forward. It's time to really hunker down and, and practice. I, you know, unlike my wife who started cello at a really young age, I started the clarinet much later. I was, I think, a 13 year old and I had a lot of catching up to do. When you lose someone, there's this, there's this void, there's this tragedy. There's something that's impossible to be replaced, but as a person, you have to figure how do you move forward? How do you move on? For me, it, it was easy. The one thing I felt I knew how to do was practice. And I, I had great mentors and teachers. You'd work together and you'd feel that there'd be growth through that. You'd feel there'd be something good coming out of it. It was a way to make peace with everything. And music was certainly that avenue.
as a kid, you never dream of playing in the Cleveland Orchestra. Or, you know, I, of course, dreamed it. I never thought my dream, that dream would come true. And I think to be a part of that is, is such an exhilarating feeling. It was October 2009. The orchestra was finishing our European tour, and our last stop was in Vienna. And so we arrived in Vienna, and the next day we went to the Musikverein um, concert hall and started rehearsing with the Singverein, the Brahms Requiem. And I knew at that moment, I knew that this was going to be a really special concert. I couldn't help but think that this is what Brahms would have experienced at a concert. Playing this piece and um, hearing the sounds to realize this is what Brahms would have heard as a composer was, was mind-blowing. Like Brahms in when he wrote this piece shortly after his mother's death, it's probably what he needed as a artist and as a composer to move forward and I, I feel a similarity or a kinship to them because you know while I had made peace with things with with my mom performing the Brahms Requiem in Vienna gave me a little bit of peace myself and kind of closing that door and really feeling that I can move forward in my life as an adult and have it not hanging over my head. One thing I really wanted to do was visit the cemetery of where Brahms was buried. And as I walked into the cemetery, I could, you know, just hear the second movement of the Brahms Requiem in my head and of that funeral march and of the text. And I think I, you know, I just felt like overwhelmed. And I, I walked to the, to the gravestone where Brahms and Schubert and Beethoven were and it really dawned on me that these musicians are not ideals, but these were actual living, once breathing people and who had feelings and who had love and loss and all the emotions. And that's so relevant because it's what their music says. It's what their music is about. It's not the idea of playing for perfection. It's about these emotions that these composers had. Grief is it's just a universal thing. We all experience loss. We all experience heartache. And playing this piece and realizing that this piece means something to Brahms. And as a musician, you want to definitely acknowledge that when you're playing it, you know what's going on with Brahms. But you can also look out at the audience and realize that to every single person there, it means something different. It means the loss of a loved one or even metaphorically of going through something that's really hard and then coming out of it stronger at the end. Music is such a subjective art form, you know, to everybody in the, in the audience. They can make it what it is for them. And as a community, we can come together and hear this piece together and hear this piece individually as musicians and as concert goers, but also as a community, hear this piece 
as something maybe bigger than that. And like in the orchestra, the idea that, you know, we want to be a part of something greater than ourselves. I think as a concert goer, you want to share your emotions and and be a part of something bigger than this, just your thoughts about something, but a community's response or a community's thought about something. And that's, I think, the greatest thing I, I miss in these crazy times is that, you know, the missing, the performing, and whether it be a joyous piece of, you know, the end of Brahms' second symphony, and you just want to stand up and scream happily afterwards, or whether it's something more intimate as a musician and as a performer, you want to, it's, it's amazing when you all experience those emotions together. And it's not something that you experience individually, but as a community, you experience that. You can really feel the energy off of that. orchestra like Cleveland can play music. We're not just thinking about pitch or ensemble or um, rhythm or what have you, which are all very important technical elements of, of being good at our craft. But I think what I admire so much about our orchestra and Franz is that we delve farther, way farther into what's going on at the time of the composer's life or what is this saying? What is the point of this? What are we trying to convey? And the idea that as a group, we all come together and play that, play a piece of music that way. So we have a uniformed view and, and I think then a very clear idea of what we're trying to present to the listener. In a lot of ways right now, as a society, we're we're mourning the fact that we can't do some of the things we love. We can't, as a musician, we can't play concerts at Severance Hall or at Blossom. As a, as a, as a concert goer, we can't attend concerts that we've been excited about. We can't take our kids to school right now. We can't do things that we've just assumed as being normal. And, and I think we're really, as a, as a culture, mourning that. I've listened to the Brahms Requiem a lot through these times and thought about, you know, what does it mean now? And what does it mean in, in, in today's society right now in history? And I think there's so much hope and so much optimism in that piece that things, you know, I, I really feel with what's going on around us now, things will get better, things will improve, things will evolve and we'll all be the better for it in the end. Robert Wolfrey chose a German requiem written shortly after the death of Brahms' own mother. Unlike many requiems, this one is meant for the living and seems to have a special power for putting us in touch with our rawest emotions. If you've been feeling mired lately, now is the time to listen and let go. Movement two, for all flesh is as grass, is coming up next. It was recorded live from Severance Hall in 2009. 